said and give a, forth a challenge tonight for every person in this room. I'm assuming and 90% sure that every person in this room professes to be a Christian. You've been saved. And I hope that's true. And so if you have been saved, this message is for you. Isaiah chapter number 6, we'll look tonight at this famous, well-known scripture. And he said um, in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now look at verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, an unclean, of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. I want to preach on that little thought tonight uh, and give you a little challenge here this evening on that word. What I'd like to do tonight, give you a very short, brief challenge, and by the, when I get through, everybody in this room tonight be willing and ready to pray that prayer. Here am I. Send me. Now, there should not be a Christian in here tonight that would say, uh-uh, no, -uh, Lord, I thank you for saving me, and I'm not going to hell, but I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to give everything to you. I I want to hold back stuff for me that I want to do. And I hope you're not like that. God knows what's best for you. He's not going to cheat you out of having a good time. Happiest you've ever been in your life when you're totally surrendered to the will of God. And by the way, we're going to live in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ain't going to burn in hell. So it ain't going to kill us tonight uh, to make some sacrifice to Him. He said, "I laid down my life for you. You to lay down your life for the brethren." You don't hear that kind of preaching anymore. Uh, because everybody, all you hear nowadays is you're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome, and you ain't. Uh, and the only thing good about you is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he sees me, he sees the blood. If he sees me like I really am, it nauseates him. And so do you too. We're a worm and undone and unclean lips. So tonight, uh, God is looking for some people who will just say, Lord, here am I. He's not looking for talented people, rich people, smart people, good-looking people, educated people, famous people. He's just looking for anybody to say, okay, Lord, here am I. Send me. Uh, They're dragging the name of the Lord in the dirt tonight. We need some young people this week and some older people, mamas and daddies, this week to go out back into this world and say, here am I. You're going to get a chance to be a great missionary this week. They said this, remember, all the 11 apostles died as martyrs, and they, they except for John, they, he wouldn't boil, and they tried to kill him, but they were all missionaries. And somebody said this, the only apostle that wasn't a missionary was a traitor. The only apostle that wasn't a missionary turned out to be a traitor. I don't want to be a traitor to the Lord. I want to be a missionary. So I'm going to ask everybody here tonight, would you be a missionary? We got this idea about missionaries if there's somebody, some weird person that can't get no church somewhere and they come in and got one of these camouflage shorts on here and glasses and, you know, they got a telescope and they're going to Africa or something. That's not God's idea of a missionary. You are a missionary to your school. You are a missionary to your work. 
You don't have to go to a foreign country to be a missionary. We have everybody in here tonight. Tomorrow you're going to be a home missionary. Judea, Jerusalem, uh, to the uttermost parts of the earth. So tonight, I want to talk about that just for a little bit. And uh, I want you to get it in your heart and be a missionary. Uh, the Lord's able to do it. He's able to do it. And you're able to do it too. So what I will challenge you to do tonight is when you leave here, say, I'm going to go and be God's missionary to somebody this week. Before I preached this tonight, I got down in my bedroom this evening and I prayed. And I said, Lord, here am I. Send me. You let me cross paths with whoever you want me to meet this week. You let me run into whoever you want me to run into this week. And Lord, by your grace, I'm going to be a missionary. I want to challenge you to do the same thing. I, who, who will go and be a missionary and tell them that Jesus loves them? You know that? You know the, the world don't realize that? You know the world, the devil makes sure the world forgets about God. I, I do this all the time and I challenge you to do it. You tell everybody you meet Jesus loves them. Don't let the devil scare you out of it. Don't be a wimp. It, just tell them Jesus loves them. I do this all the time and there's somebody, I think, well, I don't know if somebody here was with me. Uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, we uh, told this girl, witnessed to her on the bus route. She's about 26 or 7. Talked to her down here, off exit 112. And I said, ma'am, you know the Lord loves you. And you know if you're his, you'll never be happy uh, without him. And uh, she said, I know, I know. I said, do you care if we pray with you before we go? She said, no. And uh, uh, me and uh, uh, Eric and her, we bowed our heads there. And I said, Lord, I pray you bless this young lady. Help her to live for you. And sir, when I got through praying, big old tears was coming down her cheeks. She was crying. She said, thank you. Thank you. I needed that. I needed that. And we forget about that. We forget about it. We hear the Lord loves us all the time. You hear it to your blue in the face. And uh, you forget that a lot of the people out there in the world, it's a dry old desert out there. And they don't, they don't feel much love. And they don't meet many people that love them. And, and uh, we weren't out there trying to make her a Baptist. We was out there trying to get her the heart with the Lord. We wasn't trying to make her a church member. We were just trying to help her to get her life right with the Lord. And did you know I challenge everybody here to do that. Here's the attitude of most church members. First, we provide a church and preaching. People know where the church is if they want to come. That's a terrible backslid heathen way to look at it. Number two, I live right. And if I live right, my life will lead people to Christ. That's also a backslid, low-down way to look at it. Your life don't lead people to Christ. Your life makes people thirsty. Your life makes people curious. But your lips tell people how to get saved. And your lips and your life is supposed to say the same thing. By the way, that's the reason a lot of people won't do it with their lips because their life don't back it up and they don't want to live right. And they say, if I start witnessing, I'll have to live right, so I just won't mention it. That's a sorry way to do the Lord after all he's done for you. Number three, people say this. Uh, they say, well, I pray for them and I believe the Holy Spirit will bring them in when he's good and ready. Also, a backslid heathenistic way to look at it. The whole, to say the Holy Spirit ain't ready is blasphemy. I, I know people say that. Well, we're just going to have a prayer meeting and if God ever decides to send a revival or save the lost, then he'll do it. Are you trying to tell me God don't want to save the lost? He said it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He said today's the day of salvation. It ain't God's will that one person live in sin one more day. It's God's will that everybody in Burke County gets saved tonight. Tonight, amen. It's blasphemy to say he wants them to live in sin. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not true. Somebody else said this. They say, well, people are old enough to make their own decisions. Somebody else said, well, preacher, you know, it's the last days, and you just can't, you just can't go out and witness like people used to. It just, it just don't work no more. As the Lord said, in season, out of season. And it does work. It worked yesterday on that lady. It worked uh, on, on so-and-so uh, the other day. It worked on other people that got saved. It does work. Somebody else said this. Uh, most people already have their own church. Somebody said, well, I'm active in the church. Somebody else said, I don't have no personality. Uh, but there, nobody in here does not 
have a, 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 a sorry of a personality in there. Some of y'all are pretty sour. Uh, but uh, there's nobody in here that's got such a sour personality that you can't stick one of these in somebody's hand. You, know, you see this little yellow piece of paper right here? See that little yellow piece of paper? That don't look like much. That probably could. It's uh, crooked, cut crooked, and everything else. And Kelly makes these uh, for the bus workers to take out on Saturday. It said, ride the bus. Uh, there's a boy come up here from South Carolina yesterday. Drove all the way from down two hours. And he said, I just want to see how y'all do this. And I said, go. Let's go. And I give him the treatment too, buddy. I took him to some places here and yonder and showed him all kinds of he, he his, his jaws was dropping by the time we got through. He said, this is what you're doing. I said, that's right. Uh, you go where the Lord said, the streets and the lanes, the highways, the hedges. Ain't that what the Lord said? And he said, yeah, you, he said you go here and we go there. And I said, you go back home and you find a trailer park or you find an apartment complex. You find the poorest uh, run-down place in town and you go to every door and knock on them uh, and you get people to God that's who the Lord wants that's who he cares about I'm going to tell you tonight God cares about poor people God cares about uh, little kids that can't help themselves. God cares about little boys and girls that are laying out there on the couch that want to know who God is, but no parent to take them to church. God cares about them. Who will go? Who will say, Hear my Lord, send me? See that little piece of paper? You wouldn't think that that little piece of paper was much. It don't look like much. Here it says, at Shining Light Baptist Church, you will hear the Bible talk. You will learn happy songs about Jesus. And then it tells you the plan of salvation. Somebody, I'm assuming it was Miss Sandy, Desi, and all that, left one on Miss Pat door a year and a half ago, two years, about four years. Has it been that long? Four years ago on his door over there in Valdez. They came home, and one of these was on the door. Is that what I'm, am I telling this right, Miss Pat? Because I asked her, I said, uh, how did you get started coming to our church? And she said, somebody stuck one of them on the door. And you know there's churches, goes, they say, well, if we can hire a big singing group, come in here, run, run about $2,000, and uh, we'll, we'll have a big shindig, and we'll get people in. That little piece of paper done more. And you know what she told me? She said, I've been looking for Shining Light Baptist Church my whole life adult life, and didn't know it was here. And somebody, it was one of y'all, Sandy, uh, Miss Desi, one of y'all, put that on that door, and we are sitting here tonight with rich people like her helping us because of that piece of paper right there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate Miss Pat and, and Jaden and, and, uh, uh, and Taylor and all them. You know why? Just because somebody put one of them on a door. That's all. Just stuck it in the door. You put it like that. Like that right there. We did that yesterday. I just put it in somebody's door. Uh, who am I, Lord? Send me. Now, we're going to do this this week. And we're going to do it for that youth service. Have we got our, have we got our, our things? Kelly, she made us some things. Uh, run back there and get them for me, Daxter. Uh, will you get them for me? Wake up, boy. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he, he's, uh, give me them things right quick. And uh, he's going to bring them up here, and I'm going to show you. Here's the ones we're going to take. Uh, that'll be all this week. These are going to the school. No school tomorrow, right? And uh, these are going here. There's several hundred of them. Thank you, sir. And uh, you want to sing a song while you're up here? Me and you will sing. I'll play guitar. Uh, he's embarrassed in front of crowds. Uh, but uh, anyway, man, then a magazine and a movie and everything else. He can sing up here in church. Don't y'all agree with that? Uh, all right, here we go. This little thing right here says, don't miss it. Youth night. There ain't no telling whose door you can put that on. You can tell no telling you can put that door. How we know there's a God. Creation, science, Bible, evolution. Eye-opening video presentation by pastor. That makes me want to come. I want to see how good this is going to be. And, and boy, I tell you what I want to do. 
We're going to take these Saturday, hit the flea market, hit the uh, hit Sin City. Y'all ever been to Sin City over here? Sin Valley, you need to go to Sin City. They go there every Saturday. I'm telling you, it's Las Vegas the second. Oh, I don't yonder in downtown Valdez. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me this evening. We're going to take these. I take them to school this week. You say, well, Brother Danny, I might get in trouble if I give them out of school. Sue them. We need the money. And, uh, brother, that's what everybody else does. And uh, get you along. I'm just kidding. Uh, but listen, brother, take these things. Give them to somebody at work. Give them to your friend. All you young people here tonight ought to have at least three or four with you next Sunday night. Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. I get excited when we do something like that. You know why? Because it's obeying God and the Great Commission. I'm glad everybody wait like some of y'all. Or she wouldn't be here tonight. I'm glad some people take it serious. Or she wouldn't be here tonight. Here am I. Send me. When I first got saved, I went, me and these boys, I, I do believe that the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is you want to witness somebody. The evidence of being full of the Spirit, think about it. When you really, really, really got right with God, what do you want to do? You want to tell somebody else. You want to tell your family, you want to tell your mama, you want to tell your friends. That's a sure sign you got it, brother. And me and these boys, we, we wanted to witness so bad we couldn't stand it. And we would go over to the Nebo truck stop. That was the only place in Marion open back at that time. Or in Nebo open. I passed 9 o'clock at night. Store closed at 9. And we would take tracks and we'd pray and we'd get out of the car. And we was just, I was 18 years old, 19. And we'd just go in there and sit down on them stools. That it's a little restaurant over there now, right off exit 90. And we just sit down beside them big truck drivers and say, hey, how you doing there? And just talk to them about the Lord. I mean, we were 18, 19 years old. I don't know what them truck drivers thought. These bunch of kids coming in and talking to them. I'll tell you one thing, brother. I, that'll, that'll make, uh, it'll, it'll make, it'll, It'll, uh, it'll make an impression on people. Put it that way. Put it that way. They said, old D.L. Moody, they said one time, they said, Mr. Moody, we're going to make a monument to you. God's used you in such a great way. When you're dead and gone, we're going to make a big monument to me. And he said, if you want to make a monument to me, let me tell you what to make. Just make two legs run around on the whole, run around the world. A big globe. He said, that's all I care about. Just make two legs. My face don't matter. My name don't matter. Just put a monument of two legs running all over this world. Tell him the old, old story that never grows old. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. That's all that matters, people. All that matters one day is what we did for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got 400 of these tonight. We can have uh, another several hundred by Wednesday night and Saturday morning. I want everybody to take some of these and just put them out. Just put them out. Put them out. Don't waste them. Uh, uh, she put a lot of work into that this evening. And done that this evening with a sick baby. So uh, let's use them for the Lord. Use them for the Lord. I believe that that little piece of paper right there can be used by God just like that little one to reach that person is to get somebody else and may even be used by God to keep somebody out of hell. You don't know. Never know. Adoniram Judson the famous missionary to Burma, was thrown in prison for preaching. And he had a great vision for mission. And they come to him, his, his critics come to him in prison and said, uh, what about the prospects of missions now, Judson? And Adoniram Judson looked back and he said, they're just as bright as the promises of God. Listen. Paul and Silas were in jail. You say, well, I'm just a housewife and I have to stay home all the time. God can't use me. Paul and Silas was in jail. And they got a hold of God and prayed and the Lord shook it and the Philippian jailer got saved and that story's been told to millions of people. You can't contain the gospel. You can't box it in. You can't, it'll get out. It'll get the job done. Cast your bread on the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. Amen. Now listen. They say we're gaining 180,000 people a day. 
this world. It's hard to believe, isn't it? A day. There's, I don't know if I can say this right. I forgot. I don't know the exact number. I had it last night. But it's like uh, 50-something thousand people more in the United States tonight than it was this time last Sunday night. About, I'm guessing a little more or less, 50,000 per week, per week gaining. We're adding. For every, everyone that's dying, there's two born. And that's not counting abortion. That's not counting all the kids, kids that die. That's counting live births in this country. And there's a whole new generation of kids coming up that know not God. I wish you could have went with me yesterday. That, that there lady that sits right back there. We opened that, uh, we knocked on the door, and that lady opened the door, or one of the kids did, actually. She was in the bedroom, and there was six little girls, three, four, five, six. Uh, that's the way that looked stair steps, and just looking at us. And for a second, I thought, when they see us, we're all the Bible they'll read. We're all the Jesus they know. They don't know God. They're not taught uh, Bible stories in a lot of places. We're it. We're it. And, sh and somebody said earlier about shining light, shining the light. That's our church name. We're to shine that light down in the dark corners where Satan has people bound on drugs and alcohol and shine that light down in there and pull somebody out for the glory of God. Amen. I'm about through. I said these teachers one time. She asked her kids, she said, now kids, I want you to, I want you to illustrate me a Bible verse. And all the kids got to illustrate a Bible verse. And she said, now bring back next Sunday. So the next Sunday, she said, all right, boys and girls, we're all going to let you illustrate your Bible verse. First little boy got up. He took out a candle, lit his candle, held up his candle. And he said, what's your Bible verse, honey? Matthew 5, 14. Ye are the light of the world. Very good, son. Very good. Good little boy. Next little boy, come up. Teacher, I got mine. What's yours, son? Said he put a little salt, took a little salt shaker, went out like that. He said, Matthew 5 and verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Very good, son. Very good. Very good. Next little boy, he come up, he had a little banny egg, little bitty root banny egg, about that big. He laid it down. He said, that's mine. She said, son, what Bible verse is that? He said, it's Mark 14, 8. She hath done what she could. That little chicken. And you know what? I thought about that. And I thought, ain't God don't, he don't want you to be D.L. Moody. He don't want you to be. Charles Spurgeon, he only made one of them. He just wants you to do what you can. You can do what you can. You can't do what you can't, but you can do what you can. I tell Kelly them all the time, if you can't, you can't. If you can, you should. If you can, you should. If you can't, you can't. I don't know if you realize it or not, but our young people are in trouble. This world's messed up, have you noticed? This world's on a powder keg. Wrong person saying the wrong thing. Them crazy people in Iran, Iraq, that guy in North Korea. All it's going to take, buddy, is somebody push one wrong button somewhere. The whole world throwed into World War III. And that is going to happen. I just hope and pray we're gone when it does. But what do we do? What do we, I tell you what I do. Miss Desi, she's coming. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get down on my face here tonight and I'm going to say, Here, my Lord, and send me. Than me. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to take these out and I'm going to give them out this week. Take them, put some in your car. Take some to school. Say, hey, if we come get you Sunday evening, will you come to church with us? I want you to see this. Grandkids. Kids. And boy, I'm telling you, there's something about. There's something about. We had a guy here at the, at the uh, Christmas play. A guy plays basketball with us. And he's, been, he's coming. He's supposed to be coming next week. And he said, uh, he said, our church don't have no young people. None. None. So I 
the youngest people in church is 35, 40, something like that. And mother, everybody else is old and gray headed. He said, Our church is dying. I thought, Boy, isn't that sad? I don't want to see that for us or any other church, really. I want to just say, hey, Lord, here am I. Send me. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. If you want to meet me here, meet me here tonight. The spring's coming up. It's getting, it's getting spring. It's going to be youth rally before we know it. Let's just come and put our life on this altar and say, Lord, here am I. I ain't much, but here I am, Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.